haven't done official introductions yet, but we did just get a question about how long this dive is going to be. We can't be sure, but we're thinking around 24 hours, so it's going to be a long one, so you can probably check back in after, let's see, you got put on standby, so you can probably check back in a little later and we'll still be going. Still adjusting ourselves in the control van, but I wanted to uh, get started on talking about our dive plan for the day. Um, we are um, going to explore an unnamed seamount. It's Seamount C. It's near the um, Shautaka Seamount. It is that is the only named seamount in this chain. The rest are unnamed. Um, we're going to be diving to approximately thirty-nine thousand meters. Uh, sorry. 3,900 meters. 39,000 meters would be pretty pretty record-breaking for an ROV. Um, and we'll be climbing up the slope of Seamount C.
So the objectives of this dive are going to be looking for uh, fauna and characterizing the ecosystems on the seamounts. We're trying to figure out the origin of the seamounts, what kind of biology lives on the seamounts, and collect some rock samples as well so we can do some geochemical analysis. I do see a lot of comments saying that feed three is blinking on and off. We have, we are troubleshooting that, so just bear with us.
Aloha everyone and welcome to NA135. This is dive 1897 and we are diving currently on Ch the Chautauqua Seamount um, area. This is the third seamount in the chain of seamounts and we have dubbed it Seamount C because they are currently unnamed seamounts that we are exploring. So this is the first time we'll be exploring this area and we are currently at 500 meters and heading down to the seamount for a total depth of 3,900 meters. So it's going to be a long descent and I'm happy to welcome you to this descent. Uh, this is Megan Putz. I'm from the University of Hawaii and I am your watch lead for this shift. And then to my left. I'm Abrian Currington, Science Communication Fellow on this expedition. And to my right, we have our data logger. Hi, my name is Coralie Rodriguez. I'm a grad student at the Graduate School of Oceanography at the University of Rhode Island. Excited to be with you guys. Hey Megan, are you ready for front row introductions? Can you hear me? I'm on SPL. I'm not on SPL. Hi, I can do front row introductions, sure. I don't know, where did our science team go? Can you hear us? Can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you guys. Great. You ready for front row? Yeah, front row, if you could introduce yourselves, that'd be great. All right, sure. Um, we'll start in the corner, Aaron Heffron, Navigator. I'm Trevor Shepard. I'm sitting in the Herc pilot seat. Antonella Wilby, Argus. Hello, I'm Erin Rainey. I'm a video engineer for Forty Great, thank you guys in the front row. We're excited to have everybody here on this awesome dive. It's gonna be a long descent, like I said, so hang tight. And hopefully if you keep an eye out, we can see some really amazing animals in the water column as we descend. If you were here during our launch, you might've seen the pilot whale that was hanging out under the Nautilus. That was a really exciting view for most of us here in the control van. And we don't often see a lot of animals right when we get into the water. So it was a very nice surprise. Do we have any questions from our community? Not yet, but if you want to pop on to nautiluslive.com, there is a question box. Uh, we did have a question earlier about how long the dive will be, and just to reiterate, it'll be about 24 hours-ish. Might be a little shorter, might be a little longer, so it's going to be a, quite a long one, so you can pop in and out if you need to go to work or anything that you need to attend to. We'll still be here. video.
We've got a question about the dive plan. Uh, so for this dive, we will we plan to descend to approximately 3,900 meters, which is um, along the side of the of Seamount C, and then we're going to climb up one of the flanks of the seamount to about approximately 1,825 meters, and we'll be collecting rock samples and uh, some biology samples and some water samples. Yep, go for it. Question for Aaron on video. Go for it. Let's see. Oh, there we go. Is the camera lens on Argus a new one, or is it still the same lens that was taken from one of the mini vehicles on board last expedition? So it is the mini mini one that we took from one of the other vehicles. Um, so it's going to look like our last dive from the last one. It's not its normal Zeus Insight one from Pacific Insight. But our uh, Hercules one is the same as normal. Hey there, Trevor. Do you have a uh, moment to answer a question about how we collect rock samples? Yeah, you bet. 
Yeah, they're wondering if we bring a small trailer with us or how, you know, what we hold the rock samples in. Oh, I wish we could bring a trailer. That would be so much more exciting. Um, we just have to put them all into the various sampling locations of Hercules itself. So we put them in sample drawers. Uh, one, we have one in the front, one on the starboard side. And we also have a little front porch area to put stuff there. Awesome. And our bio team, would you like to talk about what kind of samples you're looking to collect on this dive? Absolutely. So um, there are a number of things that scientists from around the world are interested in studying. Um, there are a few students who are doing some really interesting PhD projects that we are looking to collect samples for. Um, one of them is one of Scott France's students at the University of Lafayette. And they are looking to collect some bamboo corals uh, for that study. And then there's a student at the University of Hawaii who is studying the Bizzel food plane, uh, food, the, the food web on the Bizzle plane. And she would like to collect some sea cucumbers in order to study their gut content. So we are going to be on the lookout for some sea cucumbers at shallower depths in order to compare those to the Bizzle plane samples. Uh, in addition to those special requests, we are going to be looking for corals and sponges that may be new to science um, and haven't yet been described. It's very likely that we will see a number of new species uh, on our dives. So it's just goes to show how little we know about these deep sea areas, especially these areas that have never been explored to, to before, just like this particular dive that we're doing today. This is a brand new area to science that has never been explored. So we're excited to see what's going to be on the seamount. It is going to be a surprise to all of us, and we're so happy to be able to share this with you through our telepresence capabilities. Then there might be some geology samples that we're interested in. Um, we have a wonderful data logger who is also looking for geological specimens. Yes, I am. Uh, I am a geologist, so I'm looking for rocks. And I'm specifically studying ferromanganese crusts. And these are rocks that precipitate onto hard surfaces like seamounts on the ocean. So what specifically is really interesting about ferromanganese crusts? Yeah, so one of the cool things about them is that they can sequester or they can take from the ambient seawater large amounts of precious metals that we need, like cobalt, nickel, copper, and um, they store them. Another cool thing about them is that they take millions of years to form. So we think that there could potentially be good indicators of past paleo-oceanographic events. So like, for instance, let's say I want to know when there was an oxygen like deficiency in the ocean two million years ago, maybe we would be able to figure that out from these crusts. That's really interesting. I always learn so much about geology on these dives just because, you know, with really great geology, you see some really amazing biology. So you can't have one without the other when we're talking about the benthic environment. And what that environment is like really drives the types of biological communities we see. Um, so one of the really cool things is these areas with the ferromanganese crust tend to have a lot of high density communities of deep sea corals and sponges. So it could be that that makes a really good habitat for these animals. And I would be remiss if I didn't say that a coral is technically a rock. <laughs> I guess it depends on the coral. I think we're about to get into a fight here. <laughs> I definitely had this discussion with uh, some other geologists who are studying paleo um, reefs. And they, they talked about these corals and I, misunderstood them and I thought they were alive samples that they were looking for unbeknownst to me that they were geologists we get down and they're they're 
getting all excited about these dead corals. And I'm just like, but there's really cool live ones over here. Why can't we look this way? <laughs> well, another, another commenter is throwing their hat into the ring and asking, wouldn't a coral be a mineral? I'll let you handle this one, Coralie. Uh, well, they uh, their skeleton is made out of a calcium carbonate or aragonite. So, yes, that's a mineral. So that's why I think it's a rock. Cor or corals are rocks. Part it, rocks. It depends on the type of coral you're talking about, because not all corals are calcium carbonate or aragonite. That's so true. For I, shallow don't know water, all, I don't know all corals. Yeah, Shallow water coral reefs are made up of aragonite, so those are our sclerotinian corals. Um, some of gorgonian corals, like our um, pink corals, red corals, in the family Corality, have uh, calcium carbonate skeletons, along with our bamboo corals also have calcium carbonate, uh, calcite parts of their skeleton. So I guess those ones could be considered your uh, mineral uh, corals, but a lot of other corals that we see in the deep sea um, might not have any skeleton at all, um, sort of like the, um, the sea pens. They do have um, sclerites within their tissues, which are calcium carbonate pieces, shards within the tissue, but it's not uh, a skeleton in that same way. Or like our black corals, um, they produce a proteinaceous a protein skeleton, so I don't think proteins are considered minerals or rocks in any way, but they can be quite hard. Coralie, do you know if there is a good way to date the uh, what is it, feral manganese crust? about that. So I don't specifically know how people would date the crust, but uh, normally the geologic tools people use to date rocks are argon argon dating, because um, they're really old. Uh, Speaking of rocks, I knew the answer to this yesterday, but do you, does anyone remember how um, how many pounds of rocks we collected from the last expedition? We collected about 900 pounds of rocks on our last expedition. Um, we had planned about 1,000 pounds of collection for these two uh, cruises, so we're definitely going to go over um, that estimate of rock collection, so the geologists should be happy. A lot of the rocks we've been picking up have been relatively heavy. Basalt tends to be particularly heavy um, type of rock. And when we want to pick up a rock, we want to pick up one that uh, is of a decent size for the studies that our geologists are looking to do. Uh, so you're picking up rocks that are maybe 30, 20 pounds. Uh, I think one of them might have been close to 100 pounds. So what's larger, or what weighs more, 900 pounds of rocks or 900 pounds of feathers? They weigh the same. <laughs> but the 900 pounds of feathers might be a little more unwieldy to deal with. I also heard tell of a rock, a really large sample that we wanted to pick up, but it was just too big for her to get back up, so <laughs> we had to let that one go. Yeah, that does happen. Uh, our vehicle can only pick up so much weight. We do have to fly these rocks back up to the surface, and if we're too heavy, our thrusters won't be able to push us back to the surface. So um, we do have to be careful how much we take from the seafloor. Uh, in terms of weight. 
I think this question is uh, asking about the final weight of probably that rock. I, I have no idea. I don't know how much it would have uh, to weigh. When we were carrying them up off the ship, um, when we were in port, uh, I think the heaviest one was really close to that 100 pound mark. At least that's what it said on the box that the rock was in. There could have been another rock in that box. I, I didn't check the contents of every box that we, we pulled off, but they were all particularly heavy. I think the lightest one was like 18 pounds. I got to haul some of those boxes. It was a good workout. It was a good workout. Definitely worked up the sweat bringing off those rocks. So oh, Megan, what do we anticipate seeing as far as biology on this dive? More sea sponges and cutthroat eels or a bit of a different set of flora and fauna? Well, the um, biological community is going to change as we make our way upslope. Because this dive is going to start very deep, we are going to see a lot, of, lot more sponges, I anticipate. Um, then we do corals. We will see some corals as well. Um, probably black coral, um, maybe some bamboo coral. We'll have to see what's down there. It, it's really hard to tell exactly what we might see in terms of fish. Uh, we'll likely see rat tail fish, fish or uh, grenadiers. Um, we will likely see cutthroat eels. They tend to be quite prevalent on seamounts like this. Um, if it's a sedimented area, we might see some sea pens, um, sea urchins, uh, maybe some sea cucumbers. Um, in terms of if it's a hard substrate, that's when you're going to see more of your corals and sponges uh, and associates like uh, crinoids or feather stars, uh, maybe some crabs, squat lobsters, and um, maybe something we've never seen before. Anemones are also quite common at these depths. Uh, we might see some cup corals. Uh, there are quite a few animals that we might see. Uh, if you're interested in checking out a bunch of animals that might be at these depths, there is a really awesome deep sea animal identification guide available online uh, on the NOAA website. And you can uh, search these animals by depth based on the depth key that's available to you on that, that website. So you can follow along with us. We on uh, the ship do use animal guides like that one in order to help identify some of these animals throughout the dive. So keep your eyes peeled and uh, work on your animal identification skills with us. How about jellyfish? Yeah, um, as we're going down, you might see a bunch of different animals passing by the screen really fast. So it, sometimes it can be hard to identify some of those animals just because of how little time we have to view them. But you might see a bunch of jellyfishes. Um, you might see siphonophores, shrimps, maybe uh, some lanternfish. So surviving at such a deep pressure requires some special or such a depth and pressure requires some special skills. Um, 
One of the commenters was wanting to know, is there any way to get a live specimen up from that depth? Uh, it depends on the animal. Uh, some animals are able to survive to the surface, um, but usually not from these depths. You would have to create a special chamber, a pressure chamber, in order to bring uh, animals safely to the surface to study them. I believe there's a group that's working uh, with sh vent shrimp that has devised a pressure chamber device uh, in order to capture these shrimps and study them in the lab, uh, keeping the temperature and pressure the same as their natural environment. Uh, uh, Hercules is not equipped with that equipment, and uh, unless we had scientists that were specifically trying to study live specimens, um, Unfortunately, none of our animals are going to make it to the surface alive, but they are going to be very critical to the scientific work that is going to be done with them. So we, we do appreciate having these specimens. We had a question about our watch names, our team names. We do not have a team name, but I'm sure that as the days progress, we will inevitably get one. So stay tuned for that. We'll see what happens. Wait, that's so fun. We should, okay, send in the chat suggestions for oh. team names. Oh dear, you can send us your suggestion for team names if you would like, but we'll see what happens. Yeah, this is our very first watch, and we're in the, the very first half hour of it, so um, it has not yet been uh, brought to us. Time oh. will tell. We don't want to be too eager. So I was not on the previous uh, cruise, so I cannot answer this question, but perhaps you can, Megan. Um, given that we are not in the Papahanaumokuakea Marine National Monument, are we going to be starting each watch with a ceremony? We did not with this watch. Um, not to my knowledge, because we are not in the monument um, and we don't have our uh, cultural liaison on board during this cruise, um, there is not going to be any special ceremony, uh, but we we do commemorate each dive by, by talking about what we're seeing and really appreciating having this opportunity to study in this very special place. While this seamount is not within the monument boundaries, it is very close, so it's going to be um, connected to the monument uh, biologically um, and geologically just because of its proximity. and. It, this is a very, very special place, um, even if it's not within the boundaries of the monument. Good job. Now we've got Teamy McTeam face. Pilot, pilot whale watch or pilot watch. Team names are earned, not given.
by the way, we have now updated our website so that you can see uh, live data for the depths on both of the ROVs, the water temperature, the ship heading, and possibly the latest observations, which we have done at the moment. Since we are in the blue water phase descending, we are at approximately 14,000, sorry, 1,400 meters and descending. What? You're from Honolulu. What are, what's wrong? What? You're, you're supposed to like know that. Like I, I rely on you for these things. I just got a question in. Our target depth is approximately 3,900 meters, and then we're going to scale up the side of the seamount to approximately 1,825 meters. That's our goal. You are just tuning in. This is the first dive of the Lu'ua'ea Ahikiike Kualono Kai expedition. We are descending to Seamount C. It is an unnamed seamount near the Shautaka Seamount. We're just outside the uh, Papahana Mokuakea Marine National Monument. Have watch lead. Can we see the flater mouse um, display? Becca, if you want to, if you want to go through the dive um, in Flater Mouse, I can ask Aaron to put it up in the on the video displays. Yeah, that would be great. Cool. See Thanks. if I can get her attention. So we are going to put up our Flater Mouse display in order to see a little bit more uh, about the topography of the seamount and our dive plan for this dive. Later Mouse is a really great um, mapping program that allows you to render three-dimensionally the shape of these deep sea features on our seafloor. And you can exaggerate it a little bit in order to see ridges and um, valleys on this seamount, which is basically just an underwater mountain. And we have planned a dive track that's going to go up along one of these ridges. And with the ROV, we always start at our deepest point and we work our way shallower because that's the safest way to uh, fly with the ROV. You want to be always looking ahead and upwards. So that's why we always plan our dive tracks to start deep and then head shallower. <laughs> it's okay. 
I have no idea who's talking to me at all anymore. <laughs> We're all over the place. <laughs> Hello, everybody. So just give us a few minutes to, to get that Flader Mouse map up. Our tech team is aware that channel three is flickering, so it is something that we are troubleshooting and we're working on it. Hey, SPL, can you guys see the thing that we're supposed to be seeing? Or do you want me to put it up on the giant display? You can see the thing that, well, I can see, actually. Never mind, I shouldn't speak for all of us. I've got, like, extra monitors. <laughs> I can see the thing that we're supposed to be seeing. Yeah, I can see that um, our Flutter Mouse is now on satellite feed three. Mm -hmm. Can you see it, though? Are you happy with this view? Um, I, li I like the view, uh, and then we can maybe take a little bit of a tour of the seamount chain well, that we're exploring and then zoom into our dive site. Yeah. My yep, job is done. That's my it's plan. On you, other <laughs> she just wants sure to know things. if you're happy with the display. I love it. It looks great. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we're so good anybody now. tuning in can check out satellite feed three. Um, and that's where you'll be able to see this is going to be our quad feed. All right, so if you guys can see it all, okay. I'm just zoomed out to give us perspective, right? So we got the Hawaiian, main Hawaiian Islands. Uh, we left Oahu yesterday in there. Um, and we've come out to this chain of seamounts. So we're going to explore during this expedition. Um, mostly unnamed. I think the only named one, I believe, is this one. And I think that's the one that's Chautauqua. But otherwise, we've just labeled them by letters to keep them straight for ourselves. So we have A, B, C, D, E, F, G. That's our, our seamount chain. Um, today we're diving on seamount C. So that's this one. And around seamount C, the depths go down and as far as, oh, 4,650 meters. Um, we cannot go that deep with Herc, so we're going the deepest we can within reason. So we're starting at a depth of about 3,900 meters down here on the seamount. We're gonna progress up this ridge. Each of those black lines is a 100 meter step, so they're 100 meter contours. We'll progress up the ridge, we'll get to this kind of uh, little mini plateau, little summit there, and that's going to be at about 2,500 meters. And then we're going to finish our trek up to the summit, um, do a nice little summit transect up here, and then just go slightly down slope a little bit um, for the end of the dive. So that's our current dive plan for Seamount C. Uh, it's pretty long. The, as planned, it's over eight kilometers. So we'll have to see how much of it we actually get done. But that is our, our goal and our hope. What is the summit depth? Summit depth, I believe, is like 1825. Let me check. Um, yeah, 1825, 1830. And the, the shallowest point, at least when I was looking at it, fell somewhere in here. So we should be kind of crossing over it as part of that transect. Awesome.
We've got a request to pronounce the name of our expedition. The trick to it is that they've taken multiple words and compressed them into one word. So it's Lu'u, A, Ea, A, Iki, I, K, Kualono, Kai. Lu'u, A, Ea, A, Iki, K, Kualono, Kai. This dive is going to be approximately 24 hours, could be a little shorter, could be a little longer. I don't know exactly what time we plan to ascend, but ascent and descent takes a few hours. So we're going to be traveling around in blue water for a few more hours yet. Hey there, front row. You got a moment to take a question about how quickly we're descending? Yeah, we could do that. I have a question. How many meters per minute are we descending? We're descending at nearly 30 meters a minute. I think we're at 28 right now. Um, but our, our target is usually 3-0. And for those of you just tuning in, we are going approximately 3,900 meters uh, is our target. And then we're going to uh, head up the upslope of the seamount up to approximately 1,825 meters. That's the goal. That's a long way to go, so this is going to be a long dive. So feel free to come in and check out your favorite watch. You can't, but you can't know which one's your favorite yet until uh, you've seen them all. So do stop by and visit us as we change watches throughout the day. Um, we change watches every four hours, and that just keeps everyone fresh and, and paying attention. It's really hard to sit in a dark room uh, non-stop so and we also do have to sleep and eat occasionally um, just like everyone else so uh, we have some amazing team members and you'll be able to hear from different people and their different expertise which is always really exciting I always learn a lot uh, when I tune in from home watching Nautilus so it's really exciting to be here uh, at sea and being part of the action <laughs> 